So you have been doing this every every day, multiple webinars. Um, at least one to two every day. So yeah, it's quite interesting these days. That's how you get to talk to everybody. I um, think we are oh, live. Okay. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, most welcome to the webinar that we are having today, which is. Uh, with Mr. Kanwaljeet Singh. Uh, as we all know that Mr. Kanwaljeet Singh, who is who leads uh, Fireside Ventures in India, is one of the most veteran uh, investors who has probably understood the consumer product industry much ahead than anybody else from an investment stand uh, standpoint. Uh, you know, he's been with uh, Helian earlier and, you know, he's done a lot of work. And I think primarily I have always felt uh, and I've looked up to him in, uh, you know, in his earliest days and I always read about what he talked about. Um, but what I really realized uh, about him was that, you know, how clearly he understood the CPG and the FMCG industry um, and, you know, how going forward that could be a great industry. I mean, I know that when we talk about startups, when we talk about the digital world, we always think of very technology based businesses. But, you know, they're also uh, shaping up is the new world of FMCG, new kind of CPG products, um, which Mr. Kanwaljeet Singh has done a lot of work on and he's also been one of the great investors who's uh, building new FMCG for India. So welcome today, Mr. Singh. Uh, we're delighted to have you over here today at Entrepreneur India's um, Capital Insider, which is really to understand, you know, uh, from the capital, uh, from the investor side as to what is happening in the space, what is happening in the sector and, you know, where investments will go. So let me start, uh, you know, we, we're living in strange times today indeed, you know. Uh, I mean, when we talk about business, everybody's on predictability mode, but it's very hard to tell as to how things will really take place. Um, so, you know, I would uh, I'd like to ask you this, that if you were to look at the consumer behavior today and the way the consumer behavior is changing today, how would you uh, rate uh, or how would you make some predictions about how, uh, what kind of products or what kind of investments you would look at as an investor, keeping that consumer behavior in mind? Sure. Thanks, Ritu. Um, my pleasure to be here. And, uh, you know, I think there is so much of dynamism out there that, you know, we used to say every quarter things change. Now every week things are changing. So <laughs> it's been, a, like you said, strange time. Uh, but I think the fundamental belief for us uh, at Fireside, for me, and a lot of people we talk to is that what will come out of this, and hopefully, you know, COVID will go away one day, whether it's six months or one year, you know, we have to just be positive and expect that, you know, we will come out of this stronger, will actually be a very interesting uh, opportunity uh, for consumer brands. Uh, and that's really the focus for us. Now, your question is a very, you know, I would say, uh, it encompasses everything. So let me break it down into a few smaller bites as you media guys tend to say, but uh, you know, happy to then go deeper into any sure. particular aspect. Uh, so let's start with the consumer behavior. I think what is two or three things have got highlighted, uh, which are very, very, I would say, uh, seminal trends and which will change uh, the consumption patterns and the way people consume products. First of all, comfort with digital transactions. I think that has been almost like the default for everybody in the country because of the lockdown, because of constraints on you know public places and shops not being open. So whether it was the you know classic e-commerce players, whether it was the hyper local players, Swiggy and you know Urban uh, Clap and others, or it was the like new players who sprung up, like people like House Joy and Store Say, etc or even the local retailers who are allowed to operate doing some kind of, you know, jugaad to offer a WhatsApp based solution. And then, you know, we can go deeper into this later, but now with this whole geo and Facebook partnership, I think that's another interesting dimension that will open up. So one behavioral trend we believe is that once people have experienced the convenience, the choices, the ease of access, using digital uh, means of uh, commerce. I think that trend will not go back just because COVID gets over. So yes, people will step out, people will go to local retail. So it's not that it will become a zero one game, but right. certainly we are step change. So that is one behavioral change. I think second one is all of us for last 60 days have been at home. So this whole you know experience at home as a almost a new way of living 
is probably going to become a very much more uh, every you know every day or every part of our life kind of a trend so while yes everything will open up at some point but we have got used to you know seeing certain things at home in fact a very nice word i read somewhere called nesting and it's called the nesting economy so anything you do at home in in a way you know people have called it nesting so whether it's work from home whether it's cook at home whether it's you know experience with the family together at home whether it's you know doing other activities at home doing zoom calls you know so that whole uh, experience at home as a category is going to spin a lot of new interesting opportunities for brands to get uh, built out uh, and then the last piece i believe which will be uh, and we were chatting about this a little while ago is there is going to be a significant premium or a significant uh, consumer uh, desire to to consume what they would trust more so i think the move towards branded the move towards uh, brands from an unorganized to an on, uh, organized space is another thing that we will see and already started seeing you know, i mean i was talking to the head of dupont uh, food and nutrition for india and he was telling me that some of their clients have told them that even basic vegetables you know now people want it properly wrapped and you know it has to come with a with a hygienic you know almost like a trusted stamp on it people are not willing to just buy it uh, from the street uh, you know licious which is a company that i have invested as a personal investor you know they are also seeing huge upsurge in demand because people are not going to go to the local the unhygienic you know suspect butcheries to buy their meat from i think those are the three big trends that i would uh, identify as what can change the entire consumption patterns overall consumption we believe uh, will certainly come back and you know it's not as if as an economy you know we will suddenly see a shrinkage next 12 months are tough and you know clearly everybody has to hunker down and you know plan the priorities right but it actually augurs very well for and it put up with consumption patterns absolutely and i mean you know you uh, you rightly put it that uh, we now sort of in the last 60 days and today is the 60th day actually and we've sort of got used to home so given the fact that you know consumers and particularly you know we we we've been so much in the hustle bustle of things professional life has is been extremely excruciating for the last 7 8 years with people traveling and doing so many other things that you know they've experienced home so to say in the last uh, 60 days and given that what kind of new product categories do you think are likely to emerge whether it is with food i mean for the first time i think i've cooked for like 10 or 15 or times during these 60 days which has not happened for such a long time but uh, you know so it made me look into new things and i'm sure so it has uh, with everybody so whether it's food whether it's gadgets i mean you know i realized the importance of gadgets so much more uh, at this point of time so what what new trends do you see in products coming up because of this time so again you know the obvious ones are the ones you called out uh, for example food uh, cooking today is becoming an experience right it's not a chore just because you know that's a highlight of the day and you know all our homes we have seen you know everybody is getting involved and you know making a meal out of it and you know, you're setting the table you're pulling out a <laughs> bottle of wine because you know that's the only highlight that you know you're doing something different otherwise you know you're just stuck in the same four walls of the of the house so any product which caters to allowing me to cook better on you know, content side of course you know people are now looking up recipes and you know the whole the digital content piece but on the product side for example uh, let me take three examples you know two of companies that i have been involved with not through fireside but on the board of dishes and id fresh they have seen a significant upsurge in demand and the demand is really because people want to cook on the vicious side you know a little bit more exotic a little bit more you know uh, and obviously hygiene and safety factors become very important so suddenly there's a big surge in demand but id also which is you know a, a very basic everyday breakfast ready to cook range right if there is idli dosa batter there is parathas there is filter coffee decoction but once again you know the convenience of getting something which you trust again going back to that same point but then you know you allow it gives you the ability to then you know have those you know hot breakfast and everything else that becomes an interesting one we have a very small company which we incubated called tasty tales uh, they are uh, ready to cook uh, brand and uh, they are basically focused on uh, 
faiths which are very authentic from different regions and there you know again they have seen a, a significant upsurge in demand because you know people want to try out you know new ideas new recipes so that is one category food second category is like you called it gadgets i think gadgets uh, the work from home is is here to stay and people are upgrading you know the day amazon opened i ordered i don't know how many items just to you know find my you know because you know suddenly you are sitting in the chair and you feel that you know your e you know aches and creaks and pains <laughs> so you want to order you know some things for your wrist you testing your laptop and all that stuff because like you know staring at a screen has never been part i mean certainly not our job is not staring at a screen for the day and you know certainly it becomes very alien so upgrading your uh, your you know quote unquote uh, uh, your appliances and your gadgets to uh, offer you a better experience second is the consumption of content so now that you are watching more movies and more netflix or amazon prime again you know there is a boat one of our companies we have seen you know the day they opened you know again he was telling me that the one day peak in demand was quite unprecedented even though large, large number of larger metro has still not opened up so we are still seeing it more in the day that's the second piece uh, i think that we are seeing the one interesting thought which might be worth uh, tracking is what happens to fashion yeah And you know everybody has talked about you know discretionary spending and all that stuff so there are two or three different points of views you know one is this whole you know what people are calling revenge shopping and you know you have been cooped in 60 days you know no ability to go out no ability to you know shopping is a is a instinct for all of us right i mean it's also it's also part of you know some kind of a vicarious pleasure so suddenly you have a situation when you can't shop and i think example of china suddenly you know some luxury stores opening up and people buying you know unprecedented number of uh, products so so that is one interesting dimension but i think the other interesting idea which we feel can be uh, worth exploring is again i'm making up a coin coining a term here so i don't know how to put a bat is the whole concept of fashion at home so you know, what how do you want to appear if you are going to spend large parts of your time in the home environment and part of that home environment is suddenly you have to come in front of a screen right uh, you know so what does it mean you know what you how you and i look right now is really our public persona so what we wear as our bottom is really more comfort more you know relaxing and so so you know is there a opportunity to create a range of products which are more comfortable or less formal yeah but you can still you know mix and match them with it you know what kind of jewelry you want to wear that yeah, barely outside my webinars i barely stepped out of my yoga pants honestly <laughs> yeah but you know you may be wearing yoga pants right now <laughs> because yeah, i can but yeah no so, you don't feel like in the office <laughs> yeah sure no but i'm saying if you are at home uh, certainly yeah. you know there will be uh, so i think uh, while i don't want to over speculate and you know uh, start predicting lot of things but certainly i would say that the opportunity to uh, to leverage this new consumption uh, call it behavior or call it pattern you have to just be fleet footed and you know again our startups you know entrepreneurs in general are always more nifty you know more fleet footed more experimentative so as a fund you know we believe there are exciting times ahead yes you know all of us are you know concerned about immediate survival and certainly you know not only in our portfolio but at a larger level you know there will be cases which are struggling with survival and cash flows and all that and we have to be you know to be very empathetic about that but i mean i am extremely optimistic about the opportunity hopefully in the next 12 months from now sure i mean you know um, uh, so this is just prior to the lockdown happened uh, in about a month back i prior i was in singapore and i realized how 711s out there had lot of these meal kits so you know essentially you could just pick up that stuff go home and cook and i you know i just wondered how interesting this is though i never seen it in the us and some other markets so do you think given the fact that we testing uh, you know restaurant food is uh, and so many other kind of meals that we've been used to prior meal kits you think might be an interesting opportunity in food so i i think so yes i think what what is happening is that uh, this whole desire to cook you know let's call it uh, exciting meals is certainly 
to see in a big upswing. I mentioned tasty tales, I mentioned licious, I mentioned ID. You know, these are all ready to cook categories. Correct. Interestingly, what is happening is, and you know, these are live conversations we are having. So we're talking to licious to say, okay, you know, we have tasty tales which does all the you know the paste and the masalas, and you have licious which supplies the meat. You know, that you combine the two, and can we find a new way of doing business where the consumer gets both together? And in 20 minutes, you have your, you know, exotic, you know, dish from regional parts of the country ready. So there are going to be certainly some interesting possibilities uh, which will emerge. So I, I personally am a, you know, there's a company called Blue Apron in in the U.S. which went through a big ups upswing in terms of uh, its market cap, uh, got listed, and then had a huge crash. Because everybody said you know meal kits don't work and people are not and now if you see it's gone back uh, you know almost uh, two three times uh, in terms of the uh, upswing so behaviorally uh, I, I think whatever works for giving you more experiences at home is certainly going to see a positive uh, upswing. Sure. Um, so we've in fact had one question come. which has come from himanshu mahapatra who says do you see some changes happening in the early learning market the preschool market because obviously you cannot teach the kids too much on the screen so any any trends that you likely to see over there uh, so see uh, again i'm not an education expert so i am okay. just talking common sense here uh, so we have a company called magic crate and uh, their whole business model was based on this Uh, believe that parents don't want too much of screen exposure, and they would rather have uh, yeah. know, their kids play with more, you know, physical, tactile, and so on and so forth, with some technology, you know, built in. So certainly, as a as a concern and as a area of focus, for sure, parents are, you know, wanting to, you know, divide the time for the child, especially in such an early age. And we have seen good business traction for that business. Now, what is also happening is that people are starting to use. Uh, Quote unquote digital uh, interface as a way of learning, which is not just self learning or learning from a screen. So live classes, you know. So uh, again, taking magic as an example, they just launched a series called Master Class series, where they have you know chess instructors, they have people who teach you how to do different skills and all that. And suddenly they see a huge ups upsurge in that demand. because everybody you know wants their child and you know, indian parents are uh, obviously they excited about many things that the child can do uh, so using interfaces like digital uh, you know thing not necessarily uh, because of uh, learning or or learning through the internet it's almost like that's just a screen but you have somebody on the other end now it can be live it can be recorded you know we have a company called sarva mm. Uh, you know now we have pretty much completely turned the business model on its head so it's entirely digital you know you can do live classes you can have content uh, streaming on the screen which you can follow you know they have uh, you know various content for meditation etc so digital content as a way of engaging i'm i'm just expanding the scope of the question a little bit right i think certainly that's that's a very exciting uh, but how do you manifest that do you have a live person on the other side do you just have You know, content or audio visuals which people can learn from. I think those models will emerge in all all directions. And yeah, storytelling. I guess a lot of story because kids essentially they understand stories at this age so much better. You know, so I know that uh, Fireside Ventures also has uh, you raised fund from L'Oreal uh, uh, itself for your fund. Um, so I mean, particularly if I were to say uh, with L'Oreal as your investor, do you see at wellness businesses uh, differently? Do you see some new things emerging or new trends emerging in the wellness sector, wellness product sector? That is. Sure. So I mean, certainly, uh, short answer is yes. <clears throat> I, I'm just looking at wellness as a much broader category. I mean, surely beauty and uh, you know what you are putting on your body. is one aspect of wellness and you know uh, we have a huge respect for l'oreal and the fact that they have you know always been at the cutting edge of uh, innovation but wellness for us is everything from uh, what you eat and there you go all the way from the basic aspects of hygiene and basic aspects of you know safety and you know making sure that you know you are not consuming something which is harmful all the way to you know uh, better nutrition you know more natural more good for you immunity so there are lots of you know new aspects of dimensions coming up 
and similarly on the on the personal care and beauty side i think there is certainly a, a very high quality of demand emerging for more herbal more organic more natural yeah and, uh, more clean label products you know less toxic less chemicals and so on and so forth and we have three companies uh, in using some form of ayurveda as the basis for their offerings you know uh, two of them in the more food and supplement space one in the personal care space and all we are seeing you know a renewed demand so ayurveda is i would say a subset of this natural and broad wellness theme so so wellness as a theme for us is almost like center of plate i mean we invest in a lot of companies which are in the good for you categories uh, so as short answer is yes i think to add a slightly nuance to your question is what loreal has done very effectively and we are really you know big uh, believers in what they are doing is they have invested and they have curated businesses which are more to, towards personalization in the beauty and personal care so they right. have in canada called uh, modiface which actually can diagnose your skin type and actually recommend products based on a picture you take of your skin on your smartphone and those kind of emerging technologies are coming up which can influence both what you eat because it can personalize either diet or specific areas that you know you need uh, help in uh, which could be you know weight loss we have a company in menstrual health and they can actually help to diagnose some problem then then recommend some ayurvedic products or in the beauty space where you can actually say listen you have a you know it's not just oily or dry but it's also you know a certain type of pigment and certain type of acne and whatever so i would say that you know uh, good for you is the big theme but within that even more interesting themes are starting to emerge so i mean loreal we see as a as a very good partner for us to you know leverage a lot of this learn sure um you know so let me uh, now uh, ask you a different kind of a question and you know you write uh, you mentioned companies like licious and then there's so many others now the fact is you know that there are there are startups and there are smes out there who are doing a lot of good work you know in ayurveda in organic and so many other sectors and you know particularly for the product category it's about their distribution it's about how they reach out and uh, sort of talk to the customer that gives them uh, the business that gives them revenue in and given the fact that of course digital has become the medium to talk to the customer but it also asks for a lot of burn you know you have to make a lot of uh, investments in order to reach out socially because of the clutter that is there on social today so what what kind of cost rationalization strategy are you giving to your own portfolio companies as well as largely that could be helpful for businesses out there you know so that they are not able to put their burn less they are able to still reach out to their customers some new kind of marketing and distribution uh you know strategies they can look at so what what would be your suggestion to them sure sure so you know at least our experience across now 20 odd companies that we have invested in and seen it and you know, obviously i have been investing in this space a little earlier before that is that it is not necessarily a very high burn and you know uh, high cap capital requirement as a, a business model if you are a little bit prudent about how you are you know building the foundation of the business so you know we have companies like mama earth and companies like boat uh, who are now you know significant in size and you know, mama earth both of them are you know much over 100 crores i don't know how much numbers are publicly available so i'm not able to share the specifics with very very limited capital and what they have done extremely well is they have leveraged the whole concept of community building of creating affinity with their core customers through better content through referral through virality so on one side you know you use uh, like in mama's case you know it's the mom community it's the mom bloggers it's you know moms talking to moms and right. once they the uh, you know comfort so it's not a, it's not the cost part of it it's really the strategy of how you effectively build that yoga bar you know works with a lot of people who are into active living go to the gym you know are both outdoor and adventure kind of uh, you know uh, seekers boat again you know they have built a beautiful campaign using uh, young almost you know edgy uh, celebrities so hard to find kl rahul and you know kartik aryan and people like that so i would say that you know uh, so that is the 
I think that there is a little bit of misunderstanding that digital brands have to be high burn and you know need to burn a lot of capital. At least we are not seeing that. Now within that, I think the question still you know begs this answer, saying what is the advice? There are two parts that we are focused on. One is that you know on one side we know that while consumers will continue to look for value. It's not necessarily going to be the cheapest price. In fact, our belief is that people will pay a small premium if they have more comfort that I'm buying something which gives me great, uh, not just product value, but also the confidence, the trust of the brand. So in that context, you know, what we don't want our companies to do is suddenly start discounting their products and ending in a situation where your unit economics goes completely out of hand. So that is one advice, and that means that you know if you have to go back to your core products, you know if you have to you know slow down the long tail, if you have to consolidate, and this is certainly for the next 12 months a very prudent strategy. And second is that instead of you know just advertising in large numbers, get much more, more focused. The good news, uh, which is really interesting as a almost like a antithesis of what we are talking. Is the cost of advertising on all digital channels has come down mm. because a lot of the categories are not advertising. You know, airlines are not advertising. Banks are not advertising. A lot of the other, you know, large uh, sectors are not advertising. So efficiency of advertising on digital channels has actually become more in favor of uh, some of these uh, smaller brands. So if you can, you know, if you can build a interesting model where, you know, so we have this very strong metric tracking around the cost of acquisition and the return on advertising uh, spend, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it's almost like, you know, uh, one of our uh, very sophisticated CEO calls it, you know, like a trading desk. You know, there are people sitting, and every 15 minutes they are, you know, checking campaigns and they are tweaking campaigns just to make sure that, you know, that. 2.5 to 3 times the advertising cost to sale. I mean, literally monitoring those kind of things. So I think it's required right. uh, orientation. But uh, I can tell you again, very honestly, it is not as expensive or not as high burn as it seems to be. Sure, but I mean, you know, also today, uh, a lot of companies are feeling that they probably need to pivot uh, their product categories. So do you think it's a good idea? I mean, given the fact that the pandemic is still there with us, and there are a lot of uncertainties, you know, we might be out, we might be nearly out of a lockdown right now, but you never know when we might be into it once again. So, uh, I mean, given all these situations, and I mean, would you ask, would you think it's right for SMEs or startups to start thinking about non-core products at this time? Uh, it's a tough one. See, it's a very wide swath of sectors. So, you know, pivoting as a general concept, I don't know how to react to that. But, you know, for example, uh, we have a fashion brand and uh, they were completely locked out, you know, no e-commerce, they could not even do it. So they started producing masks. Now, you know, that's not a pivot. That is a, almost like a, you know, like a tactical opportunity. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, so, so in a way, you know, you are making use of the resources you have and you are able to do something. Now, should every company launch sanitizers? Uh, I think in the short term, there is a shortage, so you will see the impact of that. But, you know, in the long run, you know, uh, can you create 100 brands of sanitizers with no differentiation and then it becomes like a totally commodity play? I mean, I'm personally not a big believer in, you know, doing something which is very, you know, in a long term, very, uh, you know, commoditized. But surely, you know, everybody is trying to solve for immediate uh, problems. And sometimes, you know, you are also using these tactical things to create the brand uh, story. You know, some of our companies, one of our companies launched a ring of sanitizer and they gave away a large number of sanitizers to the, you know, hospital workers, to the, uh, you know, the uh, people looking after the COVID patients. Now, that is a leadership stance which is not so much a business pivot, but a great way to build your trust and build your brand with the consumer so that when you come back to the normal you know, business and people say, okay, we like this brand, it has a conscience, which is you know, over and beyond that. So again, are, are uh, certainly you know, uh, very uh, specific to the context. Uh, like I've mentioned, you know, we have Sarva, which has yoga studios. Now, we don't yeah. think yoga studios are going to come back in a long time. So therefore, a pivot has to be done. I mean, there is no choice. So that is one extreme. 
but you know, uh, um, should a company like uh, Fable Street, like I mentioned, you know, who's got women's workwear, uh, you know, and very strong affinity with consumer, they will have to design. Like uh, the example I gave you about comfortable bottom wear is something that they are actually talking about. Correct. Now that is not a pivot. That is, you know, you know, you are almost aligning yourself to a new trend. But uh, should they, you know, stop that and get into masks? I don't think so. I think mask and, and you know, can masks become a fashion accessory along with the products? Probably that's the way we can think about it. Yeah, that, that, that's a difficulty too. I mean, so going forward, uh, you know, as a fund, do you see an opportunity which is more blended? I mean, product and service uh, coming together. I know uh, so far, you know, at Fireside, you've been more focused on a pure product. Sure. But uh, I mean, um, do you feel that, you know, so, for example, like a fitness tracker, an IoT home gadget, or I mean, you know, some some kind of another gadget which combines both. I think so. Actually, I would say that is a natural evolution, and it only gets uh, more accelerated as people get more comfortable with the digital channel and the digital media. So, short answer is again yes. Uh, you know, both for example, we are already considering some of these fitness uh, areas because the brand lends itself beautifully to two extensions. Uh, so that could be one. Now, the other way of looking at service is also, uh, like I called it, the personalization angle or the engagement angle with the consumer, again, through a digital interface. So, you know, recommendations either on counts of you know, wellness or health or beauty. I think those are probably interesting models where you are using either live or some kind of a bot interface. Uh, or artificial intelligence uh, to actually, in, in a way, you know, personalize the experience for our consumer. And uh, we are seeing that as a very interesting trend. Even globally, you know, we have seen some models emerging in that space. So I think that is one manifestation of that. But like you said, you know, uh, can you create a fitness tracker which also has a service attached to it and, you know, somebody is advising you on you know, based on the uh, data that you're tracking, what kind of food to eat, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. That, to me, that is actually a very positive uh, uh, way of building the community, building the brand, and not just selling a product and then, you know, you are looking at the consumer. Sure. And I mean, you know, uh, particularly since you have such lines, you have a lot of uh, beverages uh, in your portfolio, then you also have products like Mama Earth, which have a continuous need from a customer. But you know, I mean, given the fact that the next quarter particularly looks a bit dark in the sense that, you know, uh, we know that there have been salary cuts, job losses, and so on. And, you know, model uh, business models, which are either subscription based, or they require constant uh, ordering to happen. Do you think consumers affordability and the product price now how what kind of parity needs to come over there? Uh, so I think there will be, you know, as they call it, a flight to value. Uh, again, I'm distinguishing between value and price. Uh, it's not necessary that, you know, you're looking for the cheapest product, but surely everybody will be more sensitive to what they are spending and how much they are spending. So what, you know, all our companies and overall as an ecosystem, we need to, you know, be very conscious of is that we are not you know, offering products or prices to consumers which uh, are completely you know, outside the realm of uh, their uh, thing. So you mentioned beverages. Now oh, beverages you know, start 10 rupees a, a, a kind of a drink all the way to 150 rupees a drink. And we have always had sensitivity on the price points, especially on the higher end. I think so the mainstream consumer will still, you know, whether they'll pay 10 or 20 or 30, I think that uh, we'll find out from the value proposition. But surely, you know, everybody has to be sensitive to what kind of price you are uh, putting on the, on the product. So in, a, in that way, you know, it's going to challenge two things. It's going to challenge the supply chains. Mm. It's going to challenge the entire, you know, value chains that you are working with. And cutting out every piece of fluff, uh, fluff that is in the system. And uh, I think that's a, that's, a great, uh, that's a great opportunity to uh, you know, question every decision that you're taking and uh, you know, be very uh, uh, almost like ruthless about, about it. So right. to me, again, that's, that's a great positive. 
so there is always you know uh, in the in the desire to grow fast and gain market share you know a lot of companies get into this bad habit of saying we don't care about burn we don't care about unit economics we will just uh, grow at any cost and then we will figure it out so i'm saying maybe some good habits will start coming back sure you know i see that we just getting questions are pouring in like after every single minute so i think before i ask you four questions let's take some questions from the audience also uh, can we give the audio to vikas gurg please vikas please unmute and ask your question yeah so i am i'm uh, based in chandigarh and uh, i am into growing vegetables through the hydroponic technology so my question is that with all this happening across the globe do you see the new word being deglobalization rather than globalization that's a very interesting question because uh, i think it's probably going to be both i think the uh, produce local consume local actually has been a growing trend even globally and we have seen you know some of the finest uh, you know restaurants in the world have this very strong narrative around you know uh, essentially there are some technical terms for it but you know you you only use local produce to de- design your menu so i think that you know consciousness of uh, consuming local products is and, and in your case particularly because you are into fresh vegetables uh, as a category i think that trend is probably going to get accentuated and also i think uh, if i can be more philosophical about it i think there's also a sense of community uh, i mean if, if you can almost think of it the world may come out kinder and a nicer world after this because you know something we have seen unprecedented as a collective it's not you know it happened to me or to you it happened to everyone so in that sense you know supporting local community is uh, actually i feel can become a very interesting trend let me give you some example and i'm sure we have seen this in every city of the country all of us are on some whatsapp groups where we are getting messages directly from producers and every one of us and again i'm generalizing it uh, uh, i'm happy to you know open it up as a discussion but all of us have bought you know direct from the farms you know we have bought products uh, which you know around we are in bangalore so you know people are coming from 50 miles 100 miles away bringing a truck load or bringing a car full of uh, produce and people are buying it and people are buying in quantities in fact we have been buying because they say you know we are coming from so far we won't sell below 5 kg then we say okay we'll buy and distribute but we want to support the local uh, community you know people are bringing flowers you, know, so you suddenly end up with a bunch of you know large number of flowers in the house because you are supporting so i think the a short answer is i i genuinely believe that uh, the world will see that but however the reverse of that is where i am also very excited which is now almost become an agenda for the government which is to produce local and go global and i think india could come out of this in a very positive way and again as an example port which is one of our companies we are very excited that we can take indian brand indian produced products into global markets so i would say it's a combination of both we will see and both hopefully will be positive okay sure thanks vikas uh, can we have harvi shah next please unmute harvi and ask your question thank you so much uh, for the insight sir um we s- briefly spoke about uh, you know fashion at home so i run a fashion uh, jewelry brand online by the name bling bag my question is more around can we if we touch upon the fashion accessory segment within fashion i understand uh, you know comfortable bottom pants and so on apparels is one segment of fashion but what about the accessories are not really a need and people will not step out of the house and considering that you have a fashion jewelry brand in your portfolio how do you see this segment going forward how would this industry pivot see jewelry at least i would put in a still part of the fashion at home at least in the short term and it's not that people will not step out of their home for a you know forever so we have a company called pipa villa uh, 
and they are also into fashion jewelry and completely online as a brand. And we have been now discussing strategy and you know what is the way back and so on and so forth. So at least to me, the concept of uh, you know quote unquote that whole look of how your I mean I don't know if there's a word called zoom look, but it's <laughs> I mean, more and more, you know, common and all of us are facing a camera on Zoom. So what is that Zoom look and, you know, how do you uh, exercise yourself for that? So I, I would be that now, if, if you are also talking about other accessories like bags and, you know, other uh, category of products, that is where I would be still a little bit, you know, uh, very in the short term, again, six to 12 months. Now, from whatever we have seen of consumer behavior, especially women buying bags, there is, it's never a need-based buying, right? Shoes and bags are not bought on the fact that, you know, I need it and I'll use it for the next 12 months. So sometimes, you know, like I called it the revenge shopping, people may just buy bags because they just want to feel good. You know, you're being cooked up in the house and you need to, you know, express yourself somehow or the other. Now, so, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's suddenly, you know, buying fashion bags will become the biggest trend. But I would also not be so optimistic to say that, you know, the bag sales will completely stop. So, I think you'll have to just wait it out. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a slightly longer uh, recovery back uh, in your category versus, say, uh, food and nutrition, those kind of areas. You think it's going to be comfort over vanity? Uh, I doubt it in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> in the short run, I think comfort will add on uh, shortly. Now, you know, the challenge for all, all the designers, including Harvey and our company is, can you make vanity and comfort come together? Mm. So that, that is the exciting opportunity. Right. Sure. Raju Nair is next. Can we have Raju? Please unmute and ask your question. Yes. Uh, good day, Ritu. Good day, Kawanjit. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah, in a way, you pulled some of that thought uh, in one of your earlier uh, mentions. Uh, I am based overseas, but inherently, and I've been outside in both in the UK and the GCC for about 20 years, I have been seeing Indian brands vastly increase the quality of their produce, you know, be it in fashion, be it in food. The perception hasn't yet struck in these markets. Uh, you know, now with the impact of globalization, does India have the ecosystem, uh, the marketing ecosystem, combination of good packaging, combination of consistency to quality to take this into the international markets? Thank you. Yeah, uh, Raju, I think so. Uh, we have two brands. There is a brand of tea called Madam, uh, which is taking the high-end exotic Indian teas. And as a category, Indian teas are already acknowledged globally as probably the best teas in the world. But they are bought in big brown chests uh, in auctions. Nobody has taken the effort to brand them and sell them as a consumer product. And this young you know, entrepreneur, he's in his late 20s, uh, he decided to build a brand of tea in global markets. So to answer sure. you, we have examples of brands like that. We have a company which is the Ayurveda-based personal care, you know, oils and beauty products. They have, again, done a very successful job in US and Europe and other markets. So... I think it is a trend which is already starting to emerge and it, we believe that it can become a much larger trend now that the government has you know, officially announced this whole desire to uh, you know, support through reforms and through even you know, stronger uh, uh, push for making in India, improving quality and helping Indian brands go to international markets. So we, we see that actually as a, as a very large vector of growth for some of our brands going forward. So I, I'm very bullish on that. Good. Thank you. Sure. Jigar uh, Mehta is next. Can we have Jigar? Okay. In case he is not there, then can we have Ritesh Shetty? Uh, Ritesh, please unmute. Hi, this is Ritesh here. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my question is that uh, I understand you, you have various uh, wellness and Ayurveda brands on their portfolio. Uh, question is, how do and many of these uh, brands uh, get their work done from rural areas, workers working there? 
how will these workers uh, get their sustenance going uh, given these brands might shut down operations in the light of covid hmm. i think that's a philosophical question <laughs> uh, i mean specifically our brands are not you know sourcing in a in a uh, in the context you mentioned you know these are mostly sourced from uh, production houses from various parts of the country but at a broader level uh, you know i don't have a good answer at a company or a individual you know uh, level i think this is something which already the government has been taking as a very serious uh, look at and you know one can argue and you, know, you see all kind of debates in the uh, media and in the intellectual intelligentsia about what is enough and what is not enough so uh, unfortunately you know it's not a answer that it's in the scope of you know what our individual companies can do you know they are all figuring out what is the right strategy for them you know how do you protect your workers how do you protect your staff but solving a larger problem of how do you you know support the larger the rural right it's a little bit outside our scope i mean i'm, I'm sorry i don't have a better answer but uh, it's very difficult for me to you know answer for what is essentially going to be a government led uh, program okay thank you sure uh, so we have some questions also coming from facebook very quickly to you uh, kanuljit uh, it's uh, you know they say that there are a lot of products which brand themselves as natural and organic uh, so how how is the consumer supposed to tell whether they are really uh, natural and organic so you know i think ultimately it's really comes down to what i called in the beginning brand trust uh, and you know therefore if you see you know if today the consumption a lot of the uh, larger companies which are uh, supplying some of the more basic essential products are seeing significant growth in revenue and also you know stock market is starting to you know acknowledge that for the simple reason that you know the trust of those brands is already got built up i was telling the two before we started i was talking to some people from sipla yesterday and they have launched a uh, you know a brand of san of uh, hand sanitizers mm-hmm. now that's a category which is obviously extremely uh, commoditized extremely crowded but no it's a need of the hour but when you say it comes from the house of sipla automatically it builds in a strong element of trust and confidence so in in that sense uh, it actually becomes uh, that much you know more important for the brand to build that element of trust in in some form or fashion you know through con- conversations through you know for for our brand you know we're talking about communities we're talking about people referring it so you can put anything on the label eventually the consumer has to feel confident that they trust what you are saying but the direction to natural and organic is surely there i mean clearly you know that's a direction everybody is moving uh, sure and i think before i ask you a question there's somebody who's asking how do you think the gifting markets is likely to change um, <laughs> i haven't thought of that actually it's an interesting <laughs> i wonder if virtual gifting will become the yeah that i wonder sorry i i i don't have a very educated view on that yeah. okay um so i think um, we getting more questions but i think in interest of time you know i have an interesting one for you uh, so today we've seen uh, while you know we've seen uh, e-commerce becoming bigger in india there's been flipkart and then amazon and now we of course seeing jio becoming the next big um, e-commerce player in this country now how do you think particularly from a small startups and a very small businesses perspective and i know they have a plan for uh, digitizing the kirana the mom and pop stores what what changes do you see in the e-commerce happening in the e-commerce market going forward sure sure yeah, i think the the beauty is that the digital overall ecosystem is extremely dynamic and what we have seen literally on a quarter by quarter basis is just that change is almost the constant i mean it has to happen as you think about it i mean take just amazon for example i mean whatever 7 8 years ago they launched with a classic e-commerce like a global e-commerce model but they have gone into you know amazon prime they acquired 50% stake and more now there is old conversation around future growth they have gone into fresh vegetables yesterday we read that 
they have announced their first uh, quote unquote food delivery uh, service in bangalore so they are competing with the swiggies of the world you know they are also uh, getting into uh, a local shop program so the interesting thing for us is that all of this dynamism means that it creates new opportunities for especially the younger brands who are you know think of it as born on the net kind of brands to leverage these channels and leverage these opportunities so to us geo and this whole uh, relationship with facebook and whatsapp is a huge disruptor you know it empower the local kiranas and we believe that uh, for a kirana store to have that ability to offer some kind of a digital interface to their consumers makes them more competitive with the bigger players and what that will do in exchange is that they can offer more choice they have they, because they are not now limited by uh, shelf space in their stores so for some of our brands actually it may become a new opportunity because you can actually put your product into their catalogs while you don't have to necessarily display it in the small space that they have in the local thing so there are there are possibilities which actually will become even more interesting we believe and more more than that the response to this from the other players like amazon and flipkart has already started coming in so i think it will it will take the the whole digital disruption to the next level Correct. and i think it's good for consumers and it's good for uh, for brand and to the last mile i think you know we've had uh, so it's it's going to take the last mile in now yeah and and you know the the whole narrative in the uh, broad consensus is that the local grocers the local kirana stores have been super proactive and almost the saviors for people during this lockdown now if you empower them with a digital you know capability and digital payments and you know all of those last mile like you called it i think suddenly it becomes very interesting so as a as a consumer you know i can show my love for the local guy and as a brand you know i get more avenues to actually uh, be present in and create some interesting new uh, channels uh, for myself so i think i think it's a very good thing i am i am very bullish about it so hyper local i think we, we, we've already been seeing it emerging in the last few years but do you think it's going to be interesting now absolutely and and hyper local is where even the large e-commerce players are going correct in a way you know the fact that i can now order my fruits and vegetables i can order you know everything from a, a store and it can be delivered in say one hour or two hours i mean that that is like a i mean amazing consumer proposition right so sure. <clears throat> so now as we you know we ready to unlock ourselves after 60 days do you think <laughs> do you think the the consumer demand which has been pent up in one sense and we've seen that uh, example in china where you know harmi saw 5 million dollar <laughs> sale in about the first two days of their opening do you feel that india is going to be more conservative or do you think india is also just going to go out there and splurge uh, and put money on luxury or lifestyle or eating out of you know wherever it is that they can spend i would be a little more cautious uh, i would say that uh, i don't think indians are you know that you know, extremely you know driven by uh, you know suddenly going and expressing themselves by buying luxury and also i think the economic situation right now is not conducive for that so at least to me you know china uh, i don't know overall from an economic slowdown whether you know they saw the same kind of pressures that india has seen but surely you know uh, i don't expect people to start buying ramis bags <laughs> in a hurry <laughs> <laughs> where they going to take them <laughs> yeah but but i think certainly as i said you know companies like boat uh, where uh, the uh, literally the gates opened last week on e-commerce and we saw a big surge so there is a pent up demand Now, sure. is that demand for everyday products plus plus or is that demand for luxury i mean i would be a little cautious in predicting luxury as the bench well kanuji thank you so much for talking to us um, it's been a real pleasure and i think just to sort of summarize as to the points that you brought out really uh, for me i think the biggest takeaway is that you know vocal local is vocal now and i think we need to now think of indian products and they have a long way to go and with promising investors such as yourself in the market who have been uh, great champions of consumer product market uh, we we have a you know there's just i think we just started with uh, how 
how beautifully we can take out the Indian products and not just for the Indian market, but also taking them globally and packaging them well and being able to sell them. And I think on another hand, uh, you know, as, as you said, uh, uh, live from home. So you live from home categories are going to be very interesting. So whether it is food or whether it is going to be wellness or gadgets or, you know, the one thing I'm looking to spend on is actually a really large screen if I'm going to have to work from home in a very big way. So, yeah, so I think we'll all probably get there. So thank you very much once again. Any parting thoughts, your last message before we close this? No, I, I mean, I enjoyed the session. I mean, obviously, you know, this is uh, very, very uh, almost, uh, you know, Un uncertain time so we are all speculating at some level so you know part of our brief to ourselves is to you know stay optimistic and stay positive and we are seeing some of that reflect in our brand so i think if there are a lot of entrepreneurs and some of the questions came from entrepreneurs i would say next 12 months hunker down be you know very very conservative in not you know essentially survive and uh, when you come on the other side at least we are very confident that uh, things will actually come out even stronger, and especially on the digital and the e-commerce uh, side of things. Sure. Thank you very much, Kanwaljeet, and thank you to all the participants for joining us. Uh, and please keep the questions coming. We're going to be uh, putting out this chat on Facebook also. So if you have more questions, please feel free to ask there, and we'll be happy to answer it for you. Sure. Thank you once again for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.